guys, so this is something new we wanted to start called the IMT Diaries. Basically, we're going to try and document our journey into IMT, how nights are, how the weekends work, how the cakes work, and kind of give everyone a picture of what IMT is like since it's something new and it's just starting from this year. Yes, there was CMT before, but definitely there are some changes that we're going to implement into IMT. So um, we're starting out in Plymouth at Derrickford Hospital. We just finished the first part of our induction. Um, we've done the ID check. We've gotten um, some blood taken from us to check our serology. They've uh, taken our photos for the ID badges and everything. We figured out how the systems work, so we got our logins. And basically, the rest of the day is going to be. It's going to consist of you know getting a, a rundown of how the hospital works. So Plymouth, I'm going to talk a little bit about the city because it is very beautiful here. You know, people kind of gave me a little side glance when I told them I wanted to go down and south since I started out in Yorkshire. But it's really important to take you know, take the job where you have the rotations that you want. And I didn't mind moving to Plymouth. Um, I grew up in a beach town and it's another beach town down here. I don't know if you can hear the, the seagulls in the background. But it's a very beautiful city. This is a tertiary level hospital, which is also something that I really wanted since I started off in a DGH. Um, and Plymouth is actually where the Puritans first left when they went to the New World or to the US and then they settled in what they called Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. So I think that's a nice little circle how without everything kind of um, came along. But that being said, it is definitely a big step from where I started. I have a lot of anxiety, butterflies in the stomach. Um, but I'm, I'm really I'm really excited to see where this goes, see how the rest of the day is. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Well, it's been a month of IMT, so I thought I'd give you all kind of a general update and uh, I guess a summary of how the first month's been. So, like I said before, I started in a tertiary level hospital and before I've, I've been working in a district general. So definitely the hospital is considerably bigger than the one that I worked in before. Um, and with that, in a way, it's good because I found that the way that they made the road up was much more structured and it allowed for the doctor to have more support. For instance, um, before when I worked in District General, the hospital I had, um, when I had to do cover shifts, I was literally covering a bunch of wards on my own. And yeah, there was a reg, but the reg was also busy because, you know, it'd maybe be an FY2 or an FY1 who was working to cover the other, um, maybe less busy wards. Um, and usually I kind of wanted the reg to be with them because, you know, they're going to need a little bit more support than I am. But here, the way it's at least it's set up, um, the division's much nicer and there are more regs to kind of fall back on if you need it. So you know when we started out um, we had to do a bunch of induction type modules and, and systems 
on the computers to learn how a lot of the uh, things work, like how to request bloods or how to request x-rays and all that kind of stuff, which is why it's a really good idea if, you know, for you to work in a, in a non-training setting before you start in a training setting, because even though the system was set up differently, it was the same basic concept. So I didn't have to think too much about how I needed to do it. I just realized that maybe I had to click a different button, but it was the same basic job that I was doing, and I already understood how to do that. And then with it, the new thing about like dictating letters. So, you know, maybe in, 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 you know, in back home for you all, when you see a patient in the clinic, you just write down some notes and that's that little letter that the patient takes home. It's just something quickly you've written down in the horrible doctor handwriting. Um, <laughs> but the way it is here is, yes, you still put stuff in the patient's notes, but you need to put together an actual formalized letter that stays in the patient's records so that whether the GP sees it or if it's a speciality referral, somebody else needs to see it. And the patient also gets a letter home so that they know what's happened so they can stay abreast of their, their condition. So you basically, you know, you need to talk about who the patient is, you know, some sort of identification into this little, it looks like a little remote control that kind of plugs into the computer and you have your access for it. And it tells you when you're recording, when you're pausing, if you need to do something fancy like insert in an extra phrase here or there. Um, and then you basically say what you need to say about why the patients come in, what you've done for them today, what you want to do. It's like your own formalized plan that you would maybe put in the notes anyway when you see a patient in the ward. But now it's a little bit more, you know, this is why I saw the patient today, this is what I want to do for them. And if they want to come back to the clinic or I'm going to see them again in the clinic, that's fantastic. And then it goes to all the necessary parties and it's typed up by someone who listens to you speaking, which is why I was a little concerned about the amount of times I was stuttering through it. Um, but I guess it's a little bit of comic relief for whoever has to type that out. Um, but basically then it comes back to the secretary for the consultant and they just double check it. I mean, they ch double check their own as well, but obviously mine, they'll need to really make sure that even though they were there when I did it, if I said it correctly, if everything else they want to add, and then they sign off on the bottom and it's done. So um, the other things like how the cover works with the bleeps, you know, the pagers, um, they kind of tell you how everything needs to go and where you need to go to get everything done. The takes are definitely a little bit more stressful in the sense that, you know, there are more patients to be seen. There's a lot more that needs to be done for the patients because they're coming in a more acute setting since it is a bigger hospital and they have a lot of traumas that come through this hospital. Um, even though something is maybe already managed it through ED, when you come to see it, you, you have to remember a lot of things, make sure all those boxes are ticked because you can't always expect that it's been done. You should always double check that it's been done. And then with our ARCP, basically at the end of this year, they need to see our, our how we've done in our portfolio. They need to see all the stuff that we've done. So part of that is what you do during these takes, during these admission days, how you've assessed the patients, and then you have to speak to the consultants about that. Um, if you do any case-based discussions, any sort of mini clinical examinations, or there are a lot of things that, that's going to be in a whole separate video about how to you know go towards and prepare for the ARCP. But at least with this one month, you know, we, we, we had our first CMT day. They still call it a CMT day. Um, it was just a training day where they kind of ran through all the stuff that they expect out of us. So we've got basically one every month. And then one of them is going to be like a clinical day where we have to get a lot of things done, part of our pro portfolio. And so with the portfolio, um, there's just a ton of stuff that you always want to stay up to date with, like, you know, proper reflections, um, getting any directly observed procedures signed off, or doing any sort of learning that you can then link back, or you know any teaching that you sat in for that you can then discuss about. So you know these are some things that you don't want to leave for the last minute, because even if um, you know you do everything and and it's all done, but if you do it all before like the month before or a couple of weeks before, it doesn't reflect well on you because it's dated when you put all the inf information in. It, it, it could look like you've just put everything off to the last minute and that wouldn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't pass your ARCP but I just personally wouldn't think that it would look nice. I met with my educational supervisor who was very supportive. He kind of, you know, we went through everything about what I want to do and I've got another meeting with him um, in this next month about, you know, what my ongoing plan is. And the good thing is, luckily with the, uh, the training post that I found here, I'm in the same place. I'm not moving around, which is fantastic. Um, because you, you, you kind of grow into your role a little bit more than I think once you kind of know where you are and what you're doing. But definitely, I mean, I'm just taking a, a little bit from what he said about how IMT is set up. He said that, 
you know, in, in his time, this is basically how, how the training was structured. And CMT was kind of an easing of a lot of regulations, but they felt whoever they are, I mean, I guess the regulatory boards and GMC and everyone felt that the CMTs were not being as well prepared for reg posts and ST posts as they had been in the past. And that's not to take away from CMTs who, you know, joined ST posts. Um, everyone has their own, you know, ability and, and their own capabilities. But I think as a whole, they were, maybe there must have been many situations where there were new ST3s who were kind of unsure how to proceed as a, maybe as an acute medical registrar or just a registrar in general because there wasn't that much of a foundation and footing which is what they've tried to change now with the new IMT regulations and the way everything is set up. Yeah, I think the the first one month though overall has been fantastic. Definitely a little bit of stress, especially because you're settling into a new place. But the definite good takeaway is that there is always someone you can talk to if you need to find someone to talk to. And there's always something you can fall back on if you need a support system. So um, hopefully with more of this series, um, the IMT Diaries, we're going to talk about more and more things um, like ARCP reflections and how to make sure your portfolio stays on top. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you all stick around and continue to watch all the videos that we do put out. And don't forget, if you've not already subscribed to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and uh, follow us on Instagram. Thanks.